So this is my air compressor, and I got it probably from Lowe's, I would assume, Lowe's or Home Depot. And it's been working fine, I've had it for several years. But a few weeks ago, you actually heard it make this noise. <laughs> Now what you didn't see was all the smoke pouring out of it. So I haven't even taken it apart yet. That was a few weeks ago. And I haven't even looked at it yet. So I decided to uh, make a little video and see how it goes. And hopefully it's something interesting that we can, uh, we can fix, I hope, maybe. So let's take this thing apart and see what's going on. All right, so I removed screw here and here and on the other side. One out of here, it's still in there, but it's loose, and here, and one here, and one here, and same two on the other side. So hopefully, this will all just come up. Come out. There we go. There we go. So, that's what's inside of it, and I was just getting ready to say I don't see anything too bad. Let me grab a flashlight so you can see what's going on in there. There we go. Got a busted belt. So, there's the culprit right there. I can't imagine that's was making all the smoke unless it got stuck and was just chewing through it looks like it was kind of chewing through a little bit should be an easy fix with the amount of smoke that was coming out I was really expecting to see something majorly toasty burnt but everything seems to be all right. So I gotta go in line, see if I can get a replacement belt. Looks like there's a part number on it. So let me order a belt and um, we'll get back to this whenever it gets here in a week or two and we'll put it back together, see if it works. Okay, so we are ready to fix this. Um, I did get some new belts. Um, hopefully they're not imitation belts because they're not the exact part number. I mean, I put the part number in the search on um, eBay, and one of the results said, um, you know, it was uh, one for like 22 bucks or something like that. And I found one that was two for 16. And, uh, you know, it said it was a replacement for it, but it wasn't the exact part number. But I went ahead and bought the two for 16. And um, they should work, but um, it looks like in order to get the belt on here, what I'm going to have to do is um, I'm going to have to cut it, and then I can wrap that around. <laughs> it, it is April Fool's Day. This is the old one. I probably didn't fool any of you. Sorry, that was kind of stupid, but, you know, I couldn't not do it. These are the new belts. So the old belt part number was PJ307. That's what came off of it. And the new ones are 120Js. And again, I got two of them. They, they look good. They look decent. They look just like what I pulled off, only different part number. So I've got a spare. So obviously to put that on, I'm going to have to start taking stuff apart. So let's start here. Now, you can see what I'm doing. So instead of describing everything that I'm doing as I'm doing it, I just thought I would share a, a funny story related to belts um, while you're watching me do this. Um, if you don't want to hear the story, just stop watching the video or mute it and put on music or whatever. I don't care. Whatever you want to do. I don't care. I'm not going to tell you what to do. Um, so anyways, is that not going to fit? All right, so funny story about belts. Holy cow. 
where I used to work, for those of you who don't know, um, I was, or am, I'm a licensed aircraft and power plant technician. I worked on airplanes for many, many years. And, you know, when you work in a shop, you don't really care too much about getting, I wonder if that's left-hand thread. You don't really care too much about getting, yeah, that was left-hand thread. How about that? Well, there you go. We learned something today. That's left-hand thread. Um, you know, you don't worry too much about getting clothes dirty because you wear work pants and a work shirt. Well, where I work now, I actually, I actually teach, I instruct. So we have to look somewhat presentable. And when I first started, my boss called me into his office and he told me I needed to wear a belt. And at first I was a little hurt. I mean, I thought maybe he was hinting that I was fat and maybe a belt would help hold it in or suck it in. Um, so I'm like, I'm like, okay, why? And he's like, well, it's part of the dress code. And that's not coming off. Um, he said, it's, it's the dress code. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, then I didn't feel too hurt or upset. It's the dress code. And I said, okay, well, I can, I can, uh, I can go buy a belt. And he looked at me like I had three heads. And he's like, what do you mean buy a belt? I'm like, well, you want me to wear a belt, so I have to go buy a belt. And um, he's like, how do you not have a belt? And I said, because my pants never fall down. I mean, for me, a technician, you know, you have tools for things. Things serve a purpose. So I was never a fashionable type of person. So I never bought a belt just for the sake of having a belt. So um, I, I, you know, I look at things, you know, my, my pants never fall down. So I never bought a belt. And as you can see here, I'm going to have to take this off to get that to come out of there. So start with here. And, um, and of course that's the wrong size. So let me get some tools for this and I'll come back and continue with my, my hilarious story. It gets better. Trust me. Okay. So, um, yeah, where were we? Uh, let's see. I got to start taking this apart. The head here has to come off because this has to move out so that can come off, I think. Um, but anyways, um, sorry, that's probably loud if you had headphones. Um, yeah, my belt. So where was I there? Yeah, my boss told me to a belt. I felt fat, um, part of the dress code. So yeah, I told him I could go buy a belt. He just could not believe I didn't have a belt. So I bought a belt. And fast forward several years, now I have a new boss, that guy retired, and um, the boss that I have now is not as, not as strict, but yet he still makes fun of me when I forget my belt, you know, which I do often. I just forget to put it on, and he'll kind of make fun of me for it. Um, well, one day, one day that I managed to remember my belt, I'm in the bathroom, standing in front of the urinal, and I finish up, and when I go to button my pants, my button pops off, and it lands on the floor under the urinal. And I'm looking at it, and I'm thinking, that thing might as well be a million miles away, because there ain't no way that I'm picking that thing up. So fortunately that day, I remembered my belt because my belt was literally the only thing keeping my pants from falling down for the rest of the day. Speaking of which, being in the bathroom at the urinal, sorry if this is TMI for some of you, um, one day my work decided to play music in the bathrooms. And I remember the first day that I went into the bathroom while the music was playing and You'll never believe it, but it was Taylor Swift. So I'm standing there in front of the urinal doing my business. And guess what I hear on the speakers in the bathroom was Taylor Swift telling me to shake it off. 
And it's like, really? Don't, don't tell me how to do my business. I've been doing that for how many years now? I know what to do. You don't have to tell me. Anyways, that's a true story, by the way. You can use it if you want. But it's a true story. All right. So, taking these off. Now, the nuts on the back side here, uh, the casting has a little flat on the casting. So you don't need to put a wrench on it or a socket on it. And uh, another one. And hopefully, once this head pops off of there, I'll be able to take the piston off of the little flywheel. And another one. Hopefully I don't tear up the gaskets. But now that that's off, this piston should be able to come off. Seriously? Don't tell me there's like a little retaining clip or something in there. You know what? I might be able to just slip the new belt. Let me try this. I might be able to just snake that belt in here. Like so. There we go. How about that? And of course it slipped off of that other one. I'm sure there's a right way and a wrong way to do this. And I'm sure some of you are going to tell me in the comments that I'm doing it the wrong way. Which is fine. The other option is to loosen the motor, maybe. But I gotta take that. There's a plastic cover around there. That might show how the motor's attached. And that goes up into the casting. Yeah, I can see a screw head in there. All right, so plan B, let's get rid of these.
think we finally got it. Holy crap. What a pain in the butt that was. I'll edit out probably half an hour of that. But let's put it back together. Remember that one is left hand thread. Let's see if it works. Just this. Oh, apparently, the pressure relief switch doesn't shut the motor off when it's supposed to. Uh, that's something else, but at least the belt is fixed. So, that was one way to replace a belt. Don't know if it was the right way, but it works. For those of you who know how to do it the right way, you're probably having a good laugh. Feel free to leave in the comments how I did it wrong or if there's a better way to do it. But it seems like now I have to replace the overpressure, or the not the overpressure, but the normal uh, shutoff switch here, because that didn't work, and it blew off the uh, overpressure relief right there, which I won't lie, scared the crap out of me. So uh, life lesson learned here: before you do something, watch YouTube to see how it should be done. And until next time, thanks for watching.